Hurricane season is here, and 2024 is looking to potentially be one of the most active hurricane seasons on record due to the development of La Nina and record-breaking warm ocean waters in the Atlantic Ocean, from the Caribbean all the way down towards the main development region where hurricanes and tropical storms typically develop as we work into the heart of the season. In fact, as we work over the next couple of weeks, we're already going to need to be watching for activity. Barrel is the first one we need to keep an eye on, and we'll have have more details on that storm's progression in tomorrow's update on our first edition of Tropical Tuesday. But in today's video, I want to talk about how the season as a whole is likely going to evolve. If we start out here, we need to first look at our forecast for La Nina. Typically speaking, La Ninas tend to favor more active hurricane seasons, but there's a lot of variability that happens year to year, even in La Ninas. It's key to know how strong the La Nina is going to be and when exactly it's going to develop. If we look at some of the current forecast model guidance, you can see that we're expected to work into a weak La Nina by late fall and into the winter season. This is actually very similar to years that also had very active hurricane seasons. Typically, when you get a La Nina, especially years that are working into a La Nina out of an El Nino like we had this past winter, we get low wind shear and more tropical storms to develop across the Atlantic Ocean. Weaker than normal upper level winds develop across the Atlantic Ocean, enhance the Bermuda High, and typically leads to a better environment for developing storms. Meanwhile, strong easterly trade winds develop near South America and out towards the East Pacific and lead to a lesser hurricane season across the East Pacific. Last year was one of the most active on record in the East Pacific. This year, given the developing La Nina, it may be a little bit more tame, while our season in the Atlantic Ocean really, really ramps up over the next couple of months. In addition to La Nina, also looking at extremely warm ocean waters in the Atlantic right now. In fact, oceanic temperatures are as much as uh, a degree and a half to two degrees Celsius above normal in a pretty widespread area just east of Cuba and the Dominican Republic out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, where these tropical systems often develop as we work into August, September, and October. In fact, really the vast majority of the Atlantic Ocean is warmer than normal right now, and the Gulf of Mexico is also a good bit warmer than normal. These tropical systems need to thrive off very warm ocean water to enhance what we call convection and thunderstorm development. When you get a lot of the, that thunderstorm development and combine it with weaker than normal winds, those storms can survive, they can organize, and eventually make it a lot easier for tropical storms and hurricanes to develop. If we take a look at the Atlantic main development region where these storms most frequently form, right now it is the warmest on record, beating out just barely 2023. You can see compared to the all-time average 1991 to 2020 average, we are a nearly a degree and a half warmer than normal than the 30-year average. So again, record-breaking warmth in that particular region. We go over to the Caribbean, where after the storms develop, they tend to most frequently track. We are also at record warm levels, uh, beating out once again last year as the warmest on record for these ocean waters, which means where these storms like to track, there's more than enough warm ocean water to allow them to sustain and intensify as they start to work towards the Gulf of Mexico. And while we're not the warmest of all time right now for the Gulf of Mexico, we are a good bit warmer than normal. And at times throughout this year, we actually have been warmer than all other years on record. In fact, just recently, we had a little bit of a tropical disturbance that moved through Florida, led to flooding there, and actually helped cool those ocean waters a little bit. They are starting to recover. They'll likely remain warmer than normal as we go throughout the duration of hurricane season. Another factor that we want to look at is what do the winds in the atmosphere actually look like right now? Do they resemble La Nina or are they stronger than normal? Right now, we're nearly uh, 1.5 standard deviations below normal for the atmospheric winds, which will help amplify storm activity as we work over the next couple of months. Historically speaking, years that go from El Nino and develop into a weaker to moderate La Nina throughout the year are the years that produce the most active seasons. Looking at these five particular years, these years since 1990 produced the most 
hurricanes uh, recorded in the Atlantic. And right now we're tracking right in line with several of them. This includes 2005, 2020, which had the most named storms on record. But years like 2010, 1995, and 2017 were also very active and also transitioned from a neutral slash El Nino state into a La Nina, similar to this year. We've also seen the eastern region of La Nina start to intensify or get cooler, more La Nina-like conditions over the past month or two. Looking at the years that are closest to 2024, you can see five out of eight of them had extremely active hurricane seasons, and these years include 2020, the historic years of 2005 and 2004 back-to-back, 1999, and 1995. If we take a look at the combination of the Atlantic Ocean and the very warm waters there, plus our developing La Nina, these were the years that most resembled 2024, 1995, 1998, 2005, 2010, 2016, and 2020. All of them except for 2016 were extremely above normal with hurricane activity or what we call hyperactive. Some of these years had storms like Katrina, Matthew in 2016, and Laura in 2020 that were very destructive and memorable storms. Taking a look at these analogs in terms of where these storms most likely track this year, last year a lot of hurricane activity went out to sea or up the east coast. Florida and in the middle of the Atlantic and out towards Bermuda were very active last year. Not as much in the western Gulf of Mexico. That looks to change this year. Looking at these top analogs for 2024, the favored track tends to be up towards the Yucatan Peninsula, through the Caribbean, south of Cuba, and then up into the Gulf of Mexico, meeting areas like Texas and Houston, uh, New Orleans and Louisiana, and then the Florida Panhandle will be more at risk in 2024 compared to last year. Again, a lot of similarities to 2020, which was a very memorable hurricane season. Here's our official 2024 hurricane season outlook. We're forecasting 21 to 25 named storms this year with an extremely above normal season. And in fact, last year we had 20. We're favoring it to be even more active than that. Also favoring 11 to 15 total hurricanes and five to seven major hurricanes when all is said and done. We're just now getting started with the season and we're already starting to ramp things up. The core of the season likely really, really begins to get active as we work into August and into September as we get closer to that peak climatology. Again, we're going to be updating for tropical season every Tuesday on our YouTube channel. Be sure to like this video, share this video, give us a comment, and be sure to like our page so you can get all of our tropical season updates as we go throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall. And if you need more specific details for your precise location, need to be better prepared well ahead of time for business decisions that you may be making, be sure to scan the QR code and sign up for our Clarity platform or go to bamwx.com and inquire. We'd love to help you out as we do with numerous clients all over the country.